task 5, we will continue looking at the media text Shadow by Michael Morpurgo to consider how the presentational features are appealing for the reader and their intended effect. Remember, for task 5, you're supposed to have 8 minutes for this response. Again, your analysis of the presentational features will come with more practice and you'll get quicker at it. But these are an easy 10 marks for you to get at the very end of your test. So best working on them now because they are easy marks to get. So first thing you need to do is flat the image. So you need to look at the format, layout, audience and any techniques or presentational um, features in there that would make this an appealing piece and their intended effects then. So the format, we know it's a book cover. The layout, looking at the image overall, we can see that there is key information, written information at the top part of the media text here. There's images at the bottom. There's three separate images really. There's the dog. There is a soldier and a young person there, a child, helicopters in the background. And then the main overall background image, then it looks like a desert. So that fits with task four. What we know, this is based in Afghanistan. So we know that this is going to be a death. Uh, a desert scenario where Shadow, a man and his mother are trying to escape for a better life. Our audience then, we need to think about who this would, uh, the demographic that this would be targeted at the most. So it could be young adults, it could be young children, anyone who has an interest in the Afghanistan war perhaps, uh, anyone with an interest with animal stories where Possibly Shadow here has taken up the most room on the picture, which we're going to discuss. So maybe that's the main character, the dog. So maybe it is appealing to younger children or young adults. And then the techniques, things like colour, the style of the writing, where images are placed and any further information like the tagline and accreditation then. So without further ado, let's, let's get into it then. At the top of the page here, we have, or at the top of the text, we have a review or accreditation then. It says, author of the New York Times best-selling war novel. So to get an accreditation like this from the New York Times, you have needed to have sold over 10,000 copies within your first week of the novel itself. But it can't be just from your diehard fans. It has to be across different countries. So to get something like this on your novel is a big coup. So of course, Michael Murpurgo would be including that. He wants to sell as many copies as possible. So then, of course, we have the author's name in his specific font, which he includes for every type of novel that he writes. So it's at the top of the page. It's important. It's going to help sell the book. That's why it's placed near the top. Then we're given the title of the novel itself, Shadow. You can see here that it's kind of in darker writing. So maybe that's reflective of some of the themes that are going to be within this novel. And also it might have it might have a little camouflage look about it, which could link with the soldier or it could be cracked rock and brick and things like that. So maybe there's going to be a wee bit of destruction or trauma happening to the characters in the novel. And these are signified through the colours and shapes of the mast head itself then. Then we have our main image taking up the most room on the book cover. So Shadow is looking straight at us to the reader and that's creating a rapport, a relationship with the reader. The facial expression is a little bit sad, possibly tired from the scenario of the war that's going on. And maybe that's something that we as a reader are supposed to sympathise with, with and it might encourage us then to find out what's going to happen to these characters. You can see in the background there's helicopters, we have a soldier with the child as we spoke about earlier, there's a lot of dust sandstorms going on and we're wondering why the soldier has taken the hand of this child. Has the child been left behind? Is the soldier kind enough to look after the child? So these are questions that are starting to spin in our heads as the reader that will make us more curious and it appeals to our better nature to want to find out then what's going to happen in this novel and at the very bottom you can see here there is a tagline included which is happens on the bottom of a lot of young adult novels to give us a little bit of a flavor of what might happen within the story so here it says because heroes come in all shapes and sizes so we have a hero there in the background the soldier possibly people 
and the helicopters. Maybe they're heroes, maybe they're not. Maybe the child's going to be the hero. Or because the main image is of the dog, we could maybe assume that they're going to be the hero. So by coming in all shapes and sizes, it could be any of these characters then. So this would encourage us then, as the reader, to want to read on and find out what's going to happen. Another thing then that we have to consider is the colours. Colour psychology is very, very important. As you can see here, it follows, the whole book cover follows a certain theme. Very earthy colours, very suited to the desert. So we have brown, yellow and black colours. Brown, obviously, because we have a Springer Spaniel on the front cover. Maybe it's to connect with that character or also because of the desert. It's a very unhappy, murky, earthy colour. So maybe there's something that's a wee bit dull, possibly reflective of their situation. Who knows? Yellow, possibly a little bit like the desert here in the background. It might have connotations that there's a bit of happiness within the story. Maybe it's the rapport that's going on between the soldier and the child or maybe the relationship that might blossom between this dog and the child as we know from task four that there is a relationship that's going to build there when the child nurses the dog back to health and then we also have black which uh, has connotations of evilness emptiness any sort of horrible dull depressing moments that might happen that could connect to the story of war and also this feeling of emptiness and loneliness could then uh, ref be reflective of the situation where they're in the desert here. It's a big, vast, empty space. So maybe these are themes and connotations that we can take away as readers and give us a hint of what might happen in the novel. So next we're going to look at a sample answer of how to identify these presentational features and explain how they are intended to appeal to the reader. To answer question five then on your test, we're going to look at the presentational devices which we've, we've already identified, but we need to explain them now and your explanation for these questions are worth four marks each and identifying the presentational features are worth one mark. So easy marks. And like I said before, you're supposed to have, it's advised to take about eight minutes for your response here. As I said though, with more practice, this will become quicker and easier for you to do. So. Looking at this then, again I've included point evidence explain develop in the different colours just to make things a little bit easier for you to identify the different parts of the structured the different parts of the structure of my answer. So question 1A then for task 5, first presentational device that I've identified is the images. I think these are key, so that would be one mark there already. Then moving on to B, your explanation. So the images of the dog and war in the background are appealing to the reader. So the images and how they're appealing to the reader means that I'm identifying how these are appealing to the reader, yes, and means that the examiner knows I'm on track and I know exactly what I need to be talking about. I've also included a little bit of evidence here in my first sentence, the dog and war in the background. So it's not just the dog as the main image, it's the background that I'm going to speak about. So the dog takes up the most room on the cover, so we know she is the main character. So here I am moving into my explanation and suggesting with the layout how she is taking up the most room. She is also looking straight at the reader to create a rapport with you, causing the reader to wonder why she is sad. So there I am explaining why this is going to engage the reader and how this might appeal to us. The background images of the war, the soldier and the young boy also make the reader want to find out why the soldier is taking the boy's hand to help. So if we really wanted we could add on an extra line here that says and this appeals to the reader and encourages them to want to find out. And then you would get your four marks. The second presentational device then that I have identified is the use of colour. And again, tick, I have another mark. And the explanation here to be worth four marks. So we need to make sure that we are getting our point across that the, there is an attended, intended effect from these presentational features to appeal to the reader. So the colours on the front cover tell the reader which themes or emotions may be included to appeal to the reader. So already I'm identifying there's different themes. It's making the reader feel a certain way with emotions. And this is definitely going to appeal. So I'm answering the question. 
Brown is an important colour as the dog is brown and could mean that his life is dull or unhappy. So as we said before, it's the connection between the main animal here and then what the colour psychology behind that might be. So we get the sense that maybe his life is dull or unhappy before he meets a man. The black used for the title and the helicopters is suggestive of darkness and emptiness in this story. So really, we could say that this is also part of the explanation. So darkness because of the war and emptiness because of the desert they are in. So we're explaining explicitly here how this is used, how the colours are signifying these different themes within the story. The sand is a yellow earthy colour which suggests that there may be some happiness for these characters. So we're going on to develop our answer a little bit further by suggesting how yellow is also included in there and how this could be a different theme or emotion within the novel. Okay, so again we could add another line on there and this appeals to the reader to make sure that our examiner knows exactly what we're talking about, we're on track and we have fully answered the question.